we are in the covenant and why a thing called David's tabernacle? The answer may actually surprise you. The ark is God's literal manifest presence in the earth. It is the footstool of his throne. This isn't figuration. This is literal. And David's tabernacle, which is one of the places where the Ark of the Covenant was at, or the house of prayer, is where commissioned singers and musicians spontaneously became, um, spontaneously sang what has become the book of Psalms as a recorder, literally, they were called a recorder, wrote down everything that was being prophetically sung in front of this Ark of the Covenant. God's presence and the book of Psalms are very important for our idea of what praise and worship are. The Ark had rested in the city of Shiloh for hundreds of years since Israel settled into the Promised Land. It was eventually captured in battles with Israel's enemies, then it was made transient, if you will, for a time. David, King David, having a desire for God's presence, decided to make the very footstool, the very mercy seat, the very Ark of the Covenant, the centerpiece of his leadership as Israel's king. They actually tried to move the Ark of the Covenant on an ox cart, and they soon found out that God required his glory to be handled in a very special, specific, a very other than a very holy way. Just like when we approach God in praise and worship. David actually had to peer back into the law to find out the requirements of handling God's manifest presence. He then proceeded to carry the ark into Jerusalem, specifically to Mount Zion. However, he left all the other parts of Moses' tabernacle that were required to actually surround the Ark of the Covenant. Specifically, the curtain that veiled it, preventing just anyone having full access. Wow. Now the whole nation can come and they can, they can gaze upon the splendor of a living God who is literally coming down manifestedly right before their eyes. This, again, is not figurative. It is face to face. This is what God desired and planned ever since creation. You and I, right here today, we were created for one purpose, and that is to praise and worship. Specifically, let's put it this way, to love God with everything through our own choosing, through our own will. This is the heartbeat of praise and worship. It's not songs. It's not a part of our services. David, in his journey to that sacred procession of a throne, not his own, but the actual throne of God that he's processing in, in his leadership, it was riddled with everything from the humility that he faced, being an outcast in his own family, even being forced to live as an outlaw, his own sexual brokenness, his sin, his failures as a leader, even being guilty of murder. He's still processing the very literal presence of God into the city. And despite all of this, God actually calls him a man after his own heart, after God's own heart. He brought a sacrifice of a broken and a contrite spirit. He 
did not offer up blood sacrifices around the Ark of the Covenant. Instead, he brought a sacrifice praise. David had a willingness to run into the raging beauty of God's face on his very own footstool, the Ark of the Covenant. Just think of the glories of the encounter of the revelation and of the power that flowed right there in that simple tent. There are no crutches in this tent, in this tabernacle of David, in praise and worship. There are no crutches here. There is just instruments, there's just singers, there's just musicians, there's intercessors, and to top it all off, there's God's manifest presence. We're going to discover the keys that David used. Okay, you can open your eyes. I'm going to ask you to hold on to your question. Sure. That's okay. Okay? Let's begin to look at the words that are, we find in the very book of Psalms and also in First Chronicles chapter 16. So most of this, this is constructed in your notes. Um, you can still take notes if you want, but I'm going to go pretty fast. So because we have time to keep. <laughs> the first word, Barak. We find this again in the book of Psalms and in First Chronicles chapter 16 where it talks about what David was doing in his tabernacle, which is basically where we get praise and worship from, okay? Barak, it means to call on the name of God, specifically to bless him with reverence as an act of adoration by kneeling. Specifically, this in the Hebrew language actually has a picture of camels that are actually bowing down to drink water from a stream. Bowing down, kneeling. So if you're able, maybe move your chairs out if you need. If you're not physically able, that's okay, okay? But let's get on our knees. And let's bless the name of God. So I gave you the names of God right there in your thing. You can use those if you want. If you don't want to use those, that's a-okay. But think of who God is. Think of the names that you know him by. And begin to bless him while you are on your knees. And just begin to do it with your voice. If you want to sing, you can sing. If you just want to say it, you can say it. If you want to just, um, if, you know, let's let's try to be vocal with this because praise is vocal. It's something that comes out of you. And so, um, yeah, let's just do this for a little while. I gave you a few verses. The song verses are probably the easiest ones to do. I'll turn the music up a little. And I'll help lead you guys. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Bless 
So keep your heart focused on God. I want to give you a mystery of this word. This is really awesome. So the first time this word, Barak, actually appears is in Genesis 32, where Jacob is wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Let me explain this really briefly. The angel of the Lord is like Jesus before he came in the flesh. And um, basically, this is their encounter. This is the first time this word appears, and it actually tells us something about it. It gives us a mystery. And he, the angel of the Lord, said, let me go for the day breaks. But he, Jacob, said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And then later on it says, then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And the angel of the Lord blessed him there. And so, you know, the reality is when we bless God in this way, we actually have this living encounter that happens, whether you understand it or not. You find out who God is. He actually blesses you with his name. And so God always will respond to this kind of praise in that way. Okay, you can sit down, and we're going to move on quickly to the next word, which is halal. Say that with me. Halal. 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 What does it sound like? Halal. halal. <laughs> yeah. And what else? Hallelujah. That's true. Yeah, it sounds like Hallelujah. It means to rejoice with unhindered celebration mm. by singing. So this is where the singing begins to come in. That glories and boasts of God's renowned favor. But it also means to flash forth brilliant light, to be clear, originally of sound, but usually of color. This is the type of praise that actually makes God worthy. It makes him worthy. There are two other related nouns that basically tell us that this is thanking God specifically for what he has done. So that's this type of praise where we boast uncontrollably for what God has done. Now, how many have had God do something in their life this week? Yeah, that's really, really, really cool. So guess what? We're going to stand up and we're going to just take a few minutes and we're going to just be unhindered. So you can jump, you can dance, you can twirl. You might be a little more room. You can even be a little loud. And I want you to just bless and thank God for what he has done in your life. I just can vocalize it. If you want to sing, it would be very appropriate to sing. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. instrument accompanied by the voice. 
It also means to dance with rhythmic music. We have some rhythmic music, <laughs> so we're going to actually dance. There's a few mysteries in this, though. Zamar can also mean to prune. And the first time that it's used is when it's actually talking about planting fields. Six years, you prune your fields, and the seventh year, you let it rest, or give it a Shabbat, or a Sabbath. And so this type of pruning that we're talking about is preparing us to rest in the Lord, but into something very specifically, because there's a word that's related called samar, which means to tremble or shiver. This is actually the fear of the Lord. Psalm 119, 120, my flesh trembles for fear of you, and am I afraid of your judgments? But then there's also another word, zetmer, which is also related, and it means whiteness and wool. Get this. This is Gideon. The first time that this word is used is Gideon and Judges. And he's asking the Lord if he should go against Israel's enemies and defeat them. And basically, he wants to hear God's voice. Okay? And so he does something crazy in chapter 6, verse 37 of Judges. Look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And so the fear of the Lord, this type of fear of the Lord, is longing to actually hear his voice. And so with the mar type of praise, with instrumental type of praise that's accompanied by the voice, with rhythmic dancing, we are actually entering into the fear of the Lord, the manifest fear of the Lord, where we actually begin to hear him speak. There are even times where you may even audibly hear his voice. That's controversial, but it's out there. So let's stand up and let's Zamar, okay? I will. We still have a few minutes, so go ahead and dance. Go ahead and dance. Hallelujah. God is Zamar. God is the way to the bottom of our God is for you, we tremble the spirit for you. We long to hear the voice, God. Hallelujah. strings of your heart, the strings of your heart also. Hallelujah. Whew, that was, that was fun. I we didn't get the rooms. <laughs> okay, next word, it's yada, yada. It means to give thanks by revering, nodding, or confessing the name of God with extended hand. Now, how many of you have been told this is the international sign of surrender? Maybe a worship leader has said that. Actually isn't. In the Hebrew, when you raise up your hands in this kind of praise, you are literally throwing out stones, you are shooting out arrows, and you're casting down as in, I'm going to cast down my crown before you, God. And so when we raise our hands in praise, it's actually a sign of war. The first time that this word is used is when Judah, the tribe of Judah, is being blessed by the patriarch. And basically it says, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Yada comes from a root meaning Yad, which is specifically the hand of God. This kind of praise actually causes God's hand to begin to move in signs and wonders, specifically to defeat our enemy. So God places his hand on the neck of the enemy so that he can't lie to you. And we also place our hand on our enemy 
by saying, you know what, I'm going to praise God instead, and I'm not going to listen to your voice. So there's a little bit of a mystery in here. But Yad also, it's an indication of God's power, God's means, God's direction, his bounty, his dominion, fellowship, and handiwork. So understanding Yad in Yada type of praise really releases us to be able to minister unto him. And so let's Yada God by raising up our hands in praise. You can use some of these scriptures here. Um, I have one highlighted. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. That is what they sing over and over in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And so if you need some words, just use that here as we just get to our God and get to our praise. God, we thanks to you, Lord. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you, God, that when we raise our hands, Praise that the enemy is defeated. Thank you that when we raise our hands in praise, that you are blessed in a unique way, God, where we get to see your hands reach down and begin to work among us. God, we cast our crowns, we take them and we throw our crowns at your feet in worship and adoration and praise, God. God, we do this by submitting to you, by giving you all of our ways. God, we bless you. God, as we praise you and as we sing forth the worthiness of your name by raising our hands, God, we're going to watch every Goliath fall. We're going to literally bring those stones that are shining stuff. We are literally going to slay our idols. They're no longer going to assault us. We are going to assault with the high praises of God in our mouth. And God, as we lift our hands up, you're going to watch me win the victory for us over and over and over again. So over all of our struggles, God, we get out of you. We praise you in the Gaza way and watch you defeat everything that is holding us back, everything that is hindering us. God, our hearts belong to you. And we were designed to praise you in this kind of way. God, when we need the breakthrough, remind us to raise our hands in praise to you, God. Lord, it's not a sign of surrender, it's a sign of glory, it's a sign that you are going to show up. And you are going to fight every battle for us. And you and you alone are going to win. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the next word is toda. Toda. Let's say that. Toda. Toda. You're welcome. <laughs> that means thank you in Hebrew. <laughs> toda. It's a confession of thanks by a procession of worshipers with extended hands. Now, I'm actually researching this one right now. This may actually be a procession of worshipers actually clapping their hands. So I want you to almost think of a gospel choir that's gonna walk into this room with a <laughs> procession clapping their hands. Okay, so this is the type of praise that we do when we do Toda. It's a testimony. So when you testify, you actually are, are doing Toda. It's devotion, it's the sacrifice of praise. It's that praise offering that the worship leaders are always like, let's give the Lord a praise offering, and we start clapping our hands. Specifically, this is praise for what God is going to do. So we are speaking out, Lord, thank you for what you are going to do. Thank you that I'm actually going to overcome what holds me back. And so let's do this Todah type of praise. There's a few verses there if you want to use those. And um, let's just be a procession. So if you guys are open to this, um, let's form a procession and let's just like walk around and clap our hands to this next song and just praise God. So you may have to just quickly look at a verse if you need it. And we're gonna do this together, okay?
And the words of that song was, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You can't go wrong praising God with that. That so if if you're needing to like I need to grow in praise, just memorize this little passage right here. If you have some powerful words to give God in His praise, and so um, bless you. Thank you for coming. So let's um, let's tequila praise God here for just a moment. We're gonna try to speed things up a little, so we only have two more words. So we'll be wrapping up here pretty soon, but. Let's just tequila God. Um, you can also use Psalm 22, verse 3, but you are holy and thronged in the praises of Israel. And so let's just tequila God here for just a moment. to the front and like get on my knees and I mean, it's good God blesses that he loves it okay so I'm not saying that God doesn't show up with that but praying for sight worship is simply serving God it's serving God so praise is telling about who God is and thanking him for that or for what he has done or for what he's going to do so in a way, think of praise as evangelism, because you're actually telling yourself and everybody around you who God is, what he has done and you're thanking him for, and what he's going to do and what you're still thanking him for. So praise is like evangelism, so worship is like a lifestyle evangelism, in a way, if you will. It's how we serve God, okay? Again, think of David, he failed a lot. I have a list of 21 things that David did wrong. Most of that list, he should have actually been stoned with like people taking rocks and killing him. But he was still called a man after God's own heart. So if David can do this, if David can enter, we can too. And there's something very peculiar about worship. Worship only appears as a verb in Hebrew. It never appears as a noun. So this is an action. Yes, an action, an action. 
who actually went to serve God. So the first word that we're going to look at is abad. Abad, and it means to humbly serve God, to offer sacrifice to God, to do the service of the tabernacle, and then this is the mystery, to dress and to fill. The first time this word appears is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, where Adam is actually placed within Eden, and he's told to actually till and to dress the garden. Believe it or not, Adam was worshiping. He was worshiping Yahweh. He was worshiping his creator. This is something that is very clear in all of the Middle East narratives of even different religions and different gods. Not that we want to go there, okay? But <laughs> the reality is that many of the worshipers of these other gods, even to this day, will build extravagant gardens. Are you and I building God a garden in our heart? You know, and so that's worship. We're serving Him, we're obeying Him by saying, I'm bending my will to you and I'm creating space to worship you, to actually serve you. And so let's just take um, just a few moments and just go into this. Um, and just maybe be a little bit more reflective on this. And there's a few psalms there. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And so God, we do that. We worship you. We right now just surrender and serve you with everything, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And God, we may do it with a song or we may do it with our words, or even better yet, we will do it with our emotions. God, we love you with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, with all of our strength. We love you, we worship you with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, with all of our strength. We bow down, that we kiss the sun, we rejoice with trouble. We worship you, God. We worship and adore you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. We humbly serve you, God. God, we make that space and that interior space in our hearts for you to be and to walk in the dark the same way that you did with Adam and God, you are face to face with Adam. We long for that. God. We worship you in that kind of way. We make space for you in a garden of our heart. God, come into your garden and find the choicest fruits there. Find the fruit of the Holy Spirit there. Find just the joy of the Lord there. God, find just the, the richness of everything that we have molded in our lives to follow you to obey you. God, when we are weak and when we fail, God, we desire to run right back into your presence, God, without shame, without condemnation, God. And if any of us feel that shame or condemnation, God, that's a weed, and we just pull it out right now, God. We just pull out those weeds right now. No more shame, no more condemnation. And God, we just come in, and we just start all over again. We, we repent, we turn from those things that don't please you, and we choose the fear of the Lord. We choose to love what is righteous and to hate what is wicked, God. And so come and just create this garden with us in our hearts. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. And then there's one more word, and it's shaka. Shaka. And it means to honor reverently with homage by bowing prostrate before the Lord. Oh. Um, and this is actually a gateway to, I'm sorry, I didn't really talk about the gateways, but there's a few gateways, um, and it's in your notes, but um, specifically, um, there's a few praise words that are gateways to worship, and then within worship, there's actually a gateway specifically to prayer through shaka. Um, so this is a way that we enter, so like we're in worship, and then this type of worship will actually take us into prayer will even take us into encounter because the first time the word shaka is used is when Abraham is beginning to hear a little bit about he's actually going to have a son, his own son, okay? And what happens is three men that are actually angels, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, actually show up at his tent. 
And so when we go into Shaka worship, God actually comes toward us. He actually moves toward us to encounter us, to bring us into a place where he's actually going to begin to like do like life-changing things. You know, it's like Abraham and Sarah are about to have their whole life transformed. And so really this is a gateway to prayer, but specifically to encounter uh, you know, so basically the first time again is Genesis 18 two. So Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. Um, and so let's do that here for just a moment. And as we bow, um, just sort of kind of ask God if he has an encounter for you, if there's something that he wants to show you or share with you. And so... Yeah, if you need to make space, you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 